Welcome to episode two of Clay versus Jay. We are competing for the most walleye. We have eight hours to catch as many walleyes as I have. I'm gonna introduce my competitor yet. I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown. But it's 12 o'clock, so we're gonna get our lines in. And you guessed it, a jig and a leech. All right, buddy, Clayton. If you haven't watched his videos, he's a big jig and a minnow guy. Try an active jig and a minnow and a dead stick jig and a minnow. He likes to fish with jigs and minnows. It's understandable. All right, so most fish wins. In order for a fish to count, I have to grab it, hold it up to the camera and, and, and give you the number of the fish it is. So this will potentially get boring very quickly, but I'm gonna try to spice it up, share some, we'll do some story time with Jay, try to teach you guys, maybe catch a big walleye. Who knows, we're going for numbers. Last time we competed, we went for the biggest five fish. If you guys have not seen that video, check it out below. I'm gonna spoil it for you. If you don't wanna know who won, pause the video right now, go watch the other ones. Okay, now if you're done that, I won. Episode one, five biggest fish. Clayton just had a really tough day. I had a tough day as well, but kinda, kinda got on them at the end. And uh, got my five fish back to back to back to back. Going out. We gotta get the first couple fish on the board. Things are good, things are good. Spot locked in 23.9 feet of water. I think Clayton's got a pretty good program going on. I talked to him a little bit about pre-fish. Yeah, Clayton was telling me about 50 fish days, 60 fish days. He was hoping for 80 fish today. So I don't know if I can do 80 fish on this spot. I think a key is gonna be, you know, finding a spot with fish and just staying put. As soon as you're driving, you're wasting that precious time. So, I mean, 80 fish, that's, that's 10 fish an hour. I think that's pretty doable. There we go, number one. Saugers do not count. It's gotta be a walleye, which could hurt me. There we go, boys and girls. Number one in episode two of Clay versus Jay. All right, I'm in it, I'm in it. This is good, this is good. So Clayton gave me some details on his pre-fish and he said that he was finding them really shallow, which is fantastic because they can absolutely stack up in that shallow water and that's where you can have a smash fest. Shallow fish are just typically a little more volatile. The wind switches, weather switches, all of a sudden the wind dies down. It can be, it can get a lot tougher. I'm fishing for deeper fish, 20 to 25 feet. This is gonna be a long day, guys. Clayton is great at catching small fish. When I think of Clayton, I think Little Fish Clayton. That's kind of been his nickname growing up. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just pitching behind the boat. I'm using a longer rod, I'm using seven and a half foot rod, uh, medium light, um, but just for casting. If I was going straight vertical, I'd probably rig up a shorter one, like a 6.3 or something, but for casting, it's nice. Just hopping on the bottom, trying to just kind of cover this, this flat. Oh, just got rocked. So do I finish that cast and hope another fish hits it, or do I think I lost the leech? There we go, number two. I'm not planning to net too many fish. Going with a little heavier line. We're gonna keep some fish to eat yet. This one's going back. Number two, Jay versus Clay. You know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pinch my barb, just so, just to make it a little more fair for Clayton. I want no excuses for him. We will lose some bait though. I may use a bait button actually. This little device here has a bunch of little plastic discs and you put it over your hook and right there it'll keep your leech on or whatever you're using. Every 10 fish, maybe I'll give you a, a story, story time. There we go. Hooked up a little bit better. Definitely a little bit better. Number three, number three. That one is going in the live well. Things are good, we're getting bites every cast. So I got no complaints. Finally, get in the boat. Took a bit for that one. Oh, come on. All right, we're trying live minnow. Hook it through the head like Sam told me to. Hopefully that's the trick. Just had to find that sweet spot and then I'll just stay spot locked all day. Man, this is bad. 10 minutes without a fish, more than 10 minutes. Stuck at four. There we go. Nice. As soon as I switch back to the leech. Number five, guys. Oh, we're gonna try a shallow cast. There we go. I think this is a pike or a big walleye. Felt teeth on the line. Oh no, nice walleye. Oh no, I'm hooked on the cleat. Nice. Number six. 
Nice fish. Is that a fish? Yeah. Seven. Back in the game, still at seven. Seven walleye. Seven, check, check. Audio sync, sync, sync. I was yelling into the camera so then when I need to sync it up later, it's a lot easier because then I have high points on the audio. If I just started fishing and, you know, talking at a normal volume, it'd be a lot tougher to find. A little camera trick for you guys. Oh, here we go. Nice. Number eight, guys. Do I have a fish? Yeah. Ooh, that's better. Nine. Pace is picking up. They might be, they might be shallower. They might be even shallower. Can't catch 20 if you don't catch 10 first. There we go. Number 10. Double digits. Things are good. Hour and 20 minutes. I wanted 10 per hour. So I'm a little bit behind, but it's okay. 10 fish. Well, time for a story. Oh, story time with James. Okay, we got 10 fish. I promised I'd tell you guys a story. Well, I'm gonna tell you the story of how Clayton and I met. And while some people might assume it was just through the YouTube world or social media, which is how a lot of fishing folk meet these days, it was actually through a fishing lodge, through Walston Lake Lodge. I, uh, I started guiding when I was 16. I guided at Eagle Nest Lodge on the Winnipeg River. Spent two years there. And then I did a year at Bolton Lake Lodge. Um, both of those in Manitoba. And then I, I, the next year I decided I wanted to go somewhere probably a little farther north. Um, and I heard great things about Walston Lake Lodge. So I applied there. I applied to a bunch of lodges, but Walston was one of the ones that was on the top of my list. And I got an interview. I got an interview with uh, the guide manager, Rocky, and one of their guides, Clayton Schick. No idea who this guy was. He looked kind of goofy, but uh, interview went really well. And I got the job. Clayton and I just headed off right away at the lodge. He definitely took me under his wing helped me out a lot. Yeah, we had a great season together. And, and right after that, it was just uh, the romance lasted beyond just our, our guiding season. We ended up going on a bunch of pretty crazy trips. Some of my most memorable trips. Uh, is that a fish? And I'm gonna count down some of those moments, but first we need to get to 20 fish. And uh, I'll share a few of those trips with Mr. Schick. Oh, 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 there we go. All right. We're picking up the speed, picking up the momentum. Coming at you, Clayton, coming at you. All right, guys, here's the breakdown. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. Eight hours of fishing, we're fishing from 12 till eight. Check-ins at two o'clock and four o'clock. And then, oh, there we go. Yes, oh, and it just came off. 12, 12, 12, 12. Fishing from 12 till eight, check-in at two o'clock, check-in at four o'clock, and then nothing for the last four hours. I'm gonna find out who wins when I watch Clayton's video. Yes, yes, it's go time. 13, looks like another fish down there. I'm just dropping straight down, no more casting. 22 feet, maybe that's the magic depth. Yes, 14. I hope Clayton's doing good, I honestly do. I felt bad for the guy last time. We're checking in in 15 minutes. Come on, baby, eat my leech. Two o'clock, time to check in. Hi, Clayton, hope you're doing well. Checking in, end of period one, didn't do great. Didn't do awful. We got 14 walleye, no saugers, couple bass. Uh, yeah, hope this wind is treating you well. Hope you're catching some fish. See you in two hours. Still waiting for Clayton's check-in. So this is my strategy. If he crushed them, if he's beating me by 15 fish, I think I gotta make a move and try to find a little faster action. All right, let's see what Clayton has to say. KJ, two o'clock. Just put this one on the board, baby. Fish number 22. It's safe to say this competition is probably over already. If you would like to just call it early, you know, that's okay. Save some embarrassment for yourself. You're a little too cocky last time. I'm bringing the A game. 22, baby, in the first two hours. Boom. 22 for Clayton. 22. So I think we're going to stay here and kind of stick it out for a bit. We'll see, see what happens. I'm snagged right now. Just too bad. Anyways, that's good. There we go. 15. Get you in. 16. All right, guys, I'm gonna to try to explain the spot. We got a big pinch point, neck down between two islands. So just normally you're gonna have current through an area like that. Right now the wind is howling down here as well. We're fishing a shelf that comes off. It's about 20, 25 feet, drops off, and then 40 feet in the middle. So we're just fishing right on the edge of that plateau, casting up on the edge, dropping off the side. It's got a couple things going for it because it's a traffic zone, fish are swimming through here. And then as well, some I'm sure hanging out on the flat. So, there we go. 17. 
Just gotta know that, there we go. Very small. This is good, pace picked up quick, 18. Might have found a casting lane. Sometimes you just, you get that lane, you get that cast, and there's just, for whatever reason, it might be the rock to mud transition, but that's where the fish are loaded up. 19, 19, 19, 19. Number 20, finally. All right, we're gonna count down four of my more memorable outings with Clayton. Oh, story time with Jay. Number four. This one isn't as much of a big trip, but it's uh, it's just an evening out at Walston Lake Lodge. We're doing some evening fishing, scouting, and uh, looking for Lakers, and Clayton hooked up with an absolute monster. It was his personal best of the time. Fight was just absolutely insane, and uh, it was a 45-inch lake trout. His just huge, huge, probably close to 40 pounds. We didn't weigh it, but um, big orange fins. We were just giddy when we saw that fish for the first time. I'm not sure about any video clips, but I do have some pictures. Okay, it's filming. You don't have to do anything, just watch the screen. Is it, is it in focus? Well, there's Clayton trying to fish. Is it in focus? There's Jay with the net, and I think it's in focus, but we're waiting for the trout to come up. It's a good fish, boys. And still waiting. Professional Jay put me on this fish right now. Quality guiding right there. <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be a hog. I'm well, gonna take a leak while we're waiting. Like he won't come up. I smell a personal best. Oh yeah. I smell a lake best. <laughs> oh. Bubbles. I see the weight. Oh my goodness, that is huge. Holy that cow. Giant. giant. Oh my goodness. This thing is behemoth. Ready? I'm not gonna net it. You so ready? Close to the lure. You gotta lift them higher. Oh! oh my oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh my goodness! Oh. Dude, oh. that thing is unbelievable. Oh, wow. Oh my. Look at this. Look thing. at the fin on that. And that is number four on my list. With Clayton, we got a fish and it's off. Guys, I've lost so many fish. Clayton was at 22, so he could be just crushing me right now. All right, new spot, new outlook on life. Still stuck at 20. There we go. Finally, not a sogger. 21. All right, I think it's time to dig into the Yeti and see what's for lunch today because I haven't eaten anything today. Pepper steak and potato, Campbell's chunky, or we got creamy chicken noodle. Both sound very good. I think you're going with the pepper, steak, and potato to start with the granola bars and appetizer. We got the jet boil. If you spend a lot of time in the boat, you should have yourself a jet boil. And it is absolutely incredible. So that's the whole deal right there. There we go. Nice. 23. Not too bad. I think we might have found a new spot. This is going to be so good. There we go. 24. While cooking lunch, 25. This is the pace we need, guys, 26. That move was key. It's just, there's so many fish in there. I'm getting bites so fast. I wanna eat, but it's a competition. So once you guys are done watching this video, Clayton's video is linked down below. And that's where you find out who wins. Yes. 27, I think. There we go, 28. I'm in 24 feet of water, pitching up into probably about 20-ish. There we go. 29. On the minnow. 30. Guys, this is a good pace. All right, we're at 30. We got half an hour till our next check-in. I want 40 for our next check-in. And he's in. 31. It's a good sign when you just tighten up your line and he's on it already. Nine fish. We got 25 minutes to catch nine. So guys, this is the setup I'm using today. This is a seven and a half foot medium light NRX. Uh, it's a really whippy rod, really soft. It's forgiving. Uh, that's what I like for this. Like it's a great rigging rod. I like it for pitching these lighter jigs. Yeah, if I was just vertically jigging, I'd use a shorter rod. Then for real, this is a, I don't know if this is, this is a 2500 size Stratic. And I think I might be getting a bite. There we go. Big and small, they all count. 33. Uh, is that a snag? Yeah, that's a snake. Everybody relax. Everybody calm down. Sorry, I'm using eight pound braid. This is a 12 pound floral leader, which is a little heavier. Then I can sling those fish and not worry about having to net all them. All right, I was gonna tell you a story of 30 fish. Oh, story time with Jay. Story time. 
All right, story number three, Clayton Schick, this one was, was pretty serious. We decided to go fishing for white sturgeon for the first time. So we took, took my parents, a Lumacraft 175 Tournament Pro, and uh, we stayed in Chilliwack, fished the river there, and that was our first time experiencing white sturgeon. We're on our eighth day at the Fraser River. We now have four fish over seven feet. Jay's fighting one that probably is gonna be as big or very close. Jay just said it's super mad. So Jay, right now, 18-year-old girl calls you on the phone and says, if you answer that phone right now, bang, I'll, I'll marry you on the spot. Girl, your dreams. But you have to hand this rod over to Matt right now. What do you do? Girl of your dreams, like Taylor Swift, on the phone. What do you do? I'll do keep, you hand the phone? Do you hand the, the fish. I'll really? <laughs> you heard it. No girl is good enough for Jay Stevens. That's, this is huge. That is giant. Matt, I'm gonna grab the fish. Oh. Jay, we got her! Oh! Yeah! Woohoo! Man, I think we caught around seven sturgeon, seven feet or longer. Uh, biggest was just under eight feet. Uh, just an amazing, amazing fishery. Oh! Yes! 33. Sorry. Amazing fish. When a white sturgeon jumps, it is just absolutely breathtaking. I definitely want to go back there. Oh, and I took out a lower unit too. So I'd probably just hire a guide to the jet boat. <laughs> As I was saying, incredible trip. Good times with my buddy Clayton and Matt Getzlaff, another guide from Wollaston who I've become lifelong friends with. And yeah, some pretty, some, some pretty special memories. Haven't been back since because I don't know if I can top that. We got, we got pretty fortunate. That is a sauger. You are lucky, Clayton Schick. We got 15 minutes to go. I need a big 15 minutes. There are so many fish. 34, 35, 35, 35, 35, Clayton, I'm coming for you. So something I like to do, which I don't know everyone does, is I like to keep my finger on the line. In my mind, it just gives me that tiny little extra sensitivity, especially when it's windy and I'm having a tough time feeling the bites. I mean, it'd be a lot easier if I was just vertical, but I'm casting 60 feet out and then it's 20, 25 feet down too. So that makes it a lot tougher. There we go. Yes, we're doing it, guys. We're doing it. 36. 36. We need four fish, we got 10 minutes. 37, four o'clock. Time to send a video to Clayton. Well, Mr. Schick, the pace is picking up. We found him now, you better be worried. 37 on the board, and you are once again so lucky that saugers don't count. We will, uh, that's it. Good luck for the rest of your four hours. Peace. There's a fish. 38, 38, keeping it going, keeping it going. All right, video from Clayton. Jay, here's my little update video for you. It's four o'clock, it's actually 3.58. Things are good, I'm not gonna lie. I'm thinking about maybe going to try some other spots to give you a chance, I feel bad. I'm at 51 fish. Like, are you even gonna catch 51 fish today? Probably not. Good news though, I'm kind of getting low on leeches, remember, you know, but I still got enough to Put a good hurting on the walleyes. 51 fish, Jay. What you got? What do you got? 51. 51 walleye for Clayton. So he picked up the pace a little bit. I picked up the pace a lot more. Clayton got real cocky this time around. Clayton, you can have the title of little fish champ. It's fine. 39. There we go. Looks like a huge perch. Oh, that's a big perch. I know this isn't part of the derby, but that's a jumbo. 40. Come on, stay on. Oh, Clayton. Clayton, I'm just gift wrapping this for you. Come on. The perch are getting bigger. Oh. This is decent. Got heavy all of a sudden. I wonder if like a walleye bit it and then a pike grabbed onto it or something because it did not feel that big on the hook set. Oh, yeah, it's exactly what I said. It's exactly what I said, a big latch on. Oh man, guys. Oh, yes! You're not gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe this. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the walleye. He just absolutely inhaled it. One second here. Look at that walleye sticking out of his mouth. That's a big walleye too. Okay, the walleye counts, but I gotta get him pulled out. We got the walleye out. Guys, look at this. That was so cool. 
That was one of the coolest things I've ever had walleye fishing happen. <laughs> All right, the pike swam away, guys. Here's, there's our walleye. I'm gonna get him back as quick as possible. Oh man, I, uh, that, that made the day for me right there. That was insane. I can't believe how that fish engulfed it. Just engulfed it. A little bit of blood is worth it. That was so worth it, so worth it. And the walleye still counted. There we go, 42, 43. The pace is still good, even with that pike. I think that's 44, 45. It's a good day of walleye fishing in my books. 46, did I miss any spots? Everything's greasy. 47, 48, one of the nicer walleyes of the day. Ooh, that's a nice walleye. Biggest eye of the day. Let's give you guys a look at that beautiful Lake of the Woods gold. It's 49, we got one more and it's story time again, guys. There we go. 50 walleye, that is a good day anywhere you go. So that's 50 walleyes by myself in four hours and 47 minutes. Oh, story time with James. Story time. All right, number 50, the most epic bass trip I've ever been on. Clayton, myself, and Mark Tully, my KBI partner, the bass tournament that I've done a couple videos on, we wanted to do a bass trip. It was all time in our lives where we could take off for a couple of weeks. So I was doing some research. I went to bassmaster.com and they had just ranked the top, I think it was either 50 or 100 bass lakes in the USA. Number one lake was Falcon Lake, which is right on the Texas-Mexico border. So I mapped it out. I think it was like a 36 hour drive and I said, let's do it, let's go. So we hooked up the Alumacraft, same one that we took to the West Coast for sturgeon. And we drove and drove and drove and drove and we almost died in a crazy accident just outside of Zapata, Texas. Yeah, it took us a while to figure out the largies. I mean, we don't do a lot of largie fishing as it is. And then to do it in, in that sort of water, um, it, was, it was very new to us. But we got on a couple patterns and one of my most memorable pictures from that trip is Clayton and Mark with, a, I think it's a nine and a half pounder and an eight and a half pounder that we caught on the same afternoon. So cool. We all got personal best largemouth on that trip. We also got to stop at my buddy Barry and Mary's ranch. They were the people from the Fly Fishing Film Festival. They have some pretty awesome largey fishing as well. So we'll share a couple clips, a couple pictures of that trip, and I'm about to land number 51. <laughs> We uh, got one fish yesterday, and uh, today we got out a little bit windier. Jay put us on two really nice fish we're about to pull out. Mark's being the biggest at 9'6". And the end of the day, we pulled out this brew to 8'5". There you go, 51. No, look at the jumbo perch, guys. Perch derby next, Clayton, you're on. With the landing of that pike, I wouldn't normally just lift the fish right into the boat, but given the fact the net was so small and the fish was wrapping up in the line and like almost rolling out of the net, I thought it'd be easiest to just bring it in, deal with it quickly. But I wasn't planning for that today. 52, finally, all right, here we go. Now it's happening. So once I miss a fish, I let it fall back down. I don't crank quickly. And I often see sometimes you will miss a fish and they reel in really quick to check. But it's like, man, if that fish is still chasing, I've seen it so many times with bass and with pike and muskie and everything, you know, you get your bait out of the water and that fish is still chasing. It's still hungry. It didn't, it didn't get what it wanted, right? So, I mean, sometimes they take your bait, but often I'll wait to at least miss a second one before I pull it in because there might still be half a minnow on there and that might be enough for that fish that's chasing, right? There we go. Second time, missed him. 53, I think that's 53. So as far as jig size goes, I wanna go with the lightest I can use with still being able to feel the bottom properly. So you gotta think about current, the depth, how light or heavy of line you're using. I know if you're using heavier line, you might have to use a heavier jig. Lighter line, you can do with a lighter jig. Play with that. If you're fishing with a beginner, if you got kids out, someone who doesn't fish a lot, give them a little bit of a heavier jig to make sure that they're making bottom contact because being near the bottom is so important. 54. Three hours to go, guys. Three hours left. What a nice evening. Here we go. 57. Very happy with that. 6.15, so we got just under two hours left. Oh, nice walleye. 59. 
Probably the toughest part with, with tournament angling, competition angling is knowing when to go and knowing when to stay. And that is, it's all about decision making. And that's, that's what makes the good guys good. Yeah, it's tough to know how much, how long I should stay here, but 60 walleye. All right guys, 60 walleye. Well, time for another story. This is, this is number one. This is my most memorable trip. Oh, story time with Jay. The Florida Keys. The Florida Keys is just incredible sport fishing mecca. When you think tarpon, Florida Keys is one of the top places that comes to mind. Clayton went down like a champ and rented a condo and spent three months down there learning the water, figuring out the bites. I joined him for a month the one year, I think probably a couple weeks the next year. So I've spent a decent amount of time down there with him. One of the most memorable days with Clayton was Goliath grouper fishing. We were catching them off these wooden structures and they, they were like a couple telephone poles that were crossed at the above the surface and then underneath it kind of created some shade for these groupers. And our problem was the groupers were, were hanging out in this area. And the problem was we'd hook these fish, they'd turn around the corner around this pole and there's so many barnacles on it, they would just break off, 400 pound test, just snapped like nothing. So we're like, okay, we need to figure this out. We need to find a way that we can hook this fish and let it swim out of the structure without putting pressure on the line. So what we did is we're using stingrays for bait, live stingrays, dropped it down, hooked up with the fish, and then what we did is we boated right up to the structure and we passed the rod through the structure around this telephone pole type deal. And then we fought the fish afterwards. So that's how Clayton landed one of the monsters. The video is on Uncut Angling's channel. I'm gonna give you like a very quick clip of it. Oh, 80 inches by 60 inches around, baby. Huge. Oh, it's so big. So after we caught that one, oh, here we go, uh, 61. So after we caught that one, it was my turn. And we did the same thing, except my grouper got so tangled up in the poles that we didn't know what to do. And this was a very, very dumb decision in hindsight. But I grabbed the rod and I jumped in the water and I swam through the pillars while hooked up to a 200 pound grouper. So many things could have gone wrong. I made it through luckily and the grouper started swimming out to open ocean and I'm holding on to this bait cast with 400 pound test and I'm getting dragged through the water. There's like a, a tiny video clip of me getting dragged. I made the rod and jump in. Okay, there's, it's okay. kind of loose. Okay. And then we got into the boat. I was able to fight the fish. I jumped back into it with into the water for it for a picture. It was just crazy. Like, oh guys. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, that hurt. Oh, did that hurt. 62. Uh, beyond the grouper, the tarpon fishing, that is my favorite fish to chase is the tarpon. Yeah, so pretty phenomenal. Clayton, I've been very, very fortunate to go on some pretty cool trips together and hopefully many more to come. Clayton just messaged me just to give you some hope. I only have 10 leeches left. Guys, it's go time. It is go time, 10 leeches. Once COVID stuff chills, then hopefully Clayton's coming out to Kenora for a week or two this summer. We'll see what happens. Or maybe some big road trips in Manitoba, but uh, looking forward to many more trips. Oh, 63, 64. Nice. Oh, 70. Give me one. 72. 74. Look at that cute little guy. 75. 77. 78. 79. Every fish now could be so important if Clayton ran out of bait because he could have come to a standstill for the last who knows how long. He texted me like an hour ago saying he only had 10 leeches left. 18 minutes left, I'm at 79 walleye. Come on, baby, come on. That is 80 walleyes in eight hours. Jig and minnow, jig and leech. Didn't really matter too much, guys. What a day. All right, we got 15 minutes left. Yes, barely hooked. 81. Unreal. Three minutes left. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Yes, there we go. That's probably gonna be the last one. Number 83. Clay versus Jay episode two is complete. I wish I had more stuff to tell you. I, I tried to add some story time about uh, Clayton and I to fill things out, but this was the deal. Jig and minnow, jig and leech, mostly casting. I didn't do too much vertical. I just wanted to cover these areas. And sometimes fish do get spooked under the boat. Maybe, you know, can't say for sure. But I thought, you know what, if I can cast it out, hop it back, cover a little bit of water. 
Uh, main depth was 20 to 25 feet, caught some fish shallower. I don't know if we caught any fish deeper than that. 83 walleye, give or take a couple. Pretty phenomenal walleye fishing, a couple nice ones. And the highlight of the day, even if I don't win, which I, I really hope I, I won, that pike inhaling the walleye. I've seen T-bone walleyes, I've never seen a walleye inhaled like that. Oh, guys, make sure you're following this channel, make sure you're following Clayton Chico Doors. Uh, you gotta watch this video to see who won. Yeah, just another day in God's country. Hope you guys are doing well. Don't forget to wear your life jackets out there and we will see you guys next time.